Hi and welcome to this new tutorial. Today I'm going to be using Aurora HDR 2017 to turn this into this using this. Alright, now let's get started. Now the whole point of this tutorial is to show you not necessarily how to use Aurora HDR, but more or less how to use it to achieve um, realistic HDR photos. Now I'm going to go off on a bit of a rant here. Um, I've been doing HDR for many, many years, and I too have been a culprit of the eye bleeding nonsense that has given the um, HDR uh, photographs a bad name. But the thing here is, is that what I've sort of evolved into um, is sort of someone who strives to achieve a somewhat realistic HDR photograph. And by somewhat, I mean that, yes, I'm going to be enhancing the crap out of this. That's what I want to do with it. That's why I'm using HDR. Uh, but I don't want to make it look like um, something that's uh, completely gaudy and uh, you know with the crazy uh, halos which are the um, where you can actually see the outline of objects with a bright halo around it uh, I'm not really achieving that what I want to achieve is a is a more or less balanced frame um, with a rich color and an even contrast uh, so what I'm going to show you today is just basically my workflow process on this and Again, if you don't like HDR, uh, there's a few other tutorials I have on here on basic edits in uh, Lightroom that you can check out or you can go to learn.jasonteal.com and check out my other paid tutorials. If you are into HDR, let's get started. Now the first thing I'm going to be doing is choosing my bracketed images. Now for most of my uh, HDR work, I'll, sh I'll shoot basically uh, five exposures, okay, going starting with two stops under, um, one stop, bang on, and then, you know, the, of course, the following one stop and two stops over. Uh, the sequence that you can see here um, in my camera, this is the original um, bang on frame, and then we've got our two stops under, one stop, one stop over, and two stops over. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to shift click to uh, highlight all of these and I'm just going to drag them onto Aurora 2017. I've got both versions here but I'm going to just drag these on and it's going to open up the program. Now you can export uh, but what I've had happen in the um, past with uh, Aurora is when it was re-importing it, it was opening up a whole new catalog or something in there and I just didn't like the way that it put it back into Lightroom so I just normally just drag them straight out of Lightroom and then uh, keep a separate folder uh, later but you can you can experiment with that now what you see here is it's uh, showing me my exposures and just you know from what I've talked before this is how I shoot it okay so it, it's pretty much um, five exposures uh, set about a stop apart. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click alignment. All right. And this is what I don't really like about the program. Additional settings. Um, they've got space to put all these check marks here. I don't know why they have to add in this additional dialogue. All right. Uh, ghost reduction. Uh, there were some people moving in the background. So I'm going to turn that on. Uh, I'm going to keep my reference image at my baseline. Uh, one, the amount, medium. And because I was shooting towards the sun, yes, I'm going to turn on the uh, chromatic aberration removal. Uh, this is just, especially with HDR, uh, the chromatic aberration seems to be highlighted along with any sort of uh, dust particles you have on your sensor or lens. So do be aware of that. Now, we've got all that set up. We're going to click Create HDR. And it's going to... Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to pop up here. Uh, so just uh, take a moment, relax, get yourself a cup of coffee, and uh, this should be uh, coming up momentarily. 
Okay, so we're back in here, and uh, the reason that uh, this took a little bit longer is, in fact, because we were using the uh, chromatic aberration removal and the ghost reduction. Uh, so do keep that in mind uh, when you are, um, you know, importing your photos into any sort of HDR program. Um, if you are adding in the uh, ghost reduction and the chromatic aberration removal, uh, and, or even if you've got a program that reduces the noise, it will take longer. Uh, now, what we've got here is, uh, this is the Tribal in Incheon, South Korea. And it's, it's not a great HDR shot. Um, you can see my, my sensor is dirty, so all the spots that we've got to sort of remove. But what I want to show you is just a way to really get um, a usable image from this. Um, and by that, I mean, uh, yes, if we click on, uh, say, this preset here, New Emotions, um, it is not great. Okay, it, it's all right, but yeah, no, okay? So uh, what we can do is most of the presets, dare I say, are meh, a little bit um, too, well, eye bleeding gaudy. Like, like I'm not sure what um, you really want to achieve with this, okay? Um, so, I mean, you can click around with the presets. Um, my favorite out of all of this is the vivid memories because it, it's getting the punch of um, uh, color that I want and it's basically uh, not really over stretching the image and making it look, just look nasty. And, and by that, I mean, if, if you jump to, say, one of these realistic and detailed, I'm going to show you what makes sort of a bad um, HDR image here, is if you look at the center of the uh, concrete bowl area, you see all this detail is brought out, uh, not to mention all the dust that was on my lens maybe from that day. There's a lot here, and it doesn't really add to the image, not to mention it's highlighting all the... Um, dirty spots that were on my sensor that day that, you know, really uh, doesn't need to be highlighted, uh, all of this stuff, and it's really not making that attractive of an image. Now, a lot of these presets inside of um, uh, the Aurora platform or any other HDR platform really do kind of push um, that crunchiness, the the uh, haloing, what have you. So basically what I'm going to try and do is just bring out this natural punch. And Vivid Memories is a, is a great one because it does bring out the saturation, but it's not uh, pushing the detail too much, okay? Um, and then, so basically what we want to do is just sort of um, sharpen the image up and then just tone down some of the uh, aspects of it. Uh, because what it's fighting to do is make it bright, but make it contrasty. And that's where uh, HDR sort of uh, gives it a little bit of a bad name. Uh, so typically, um, when you're looking here, the HDR look, that's what's going to give it that sort of um, weird halo-y garbage. Uh, so just drag that right back down. Um, now the exposure... It's, it's fine, it's a little bright for my liking, so I'm just gonna dial it back a little bit, uh, not too much. And then um, adjust the smart tone. I, and then what I'm doing is just sort of like making it back into more of a realistic image. Yes, it's, it's quite saturated, but you know, I can deal with that, okay? And then um, maybe bring in the blacks a little bit, uh, just to sort of, um, you know, add in some distance. I I do want to um, uh, make some sort of contrast here, but the more that I drop these down, the more that I play around, you're going to see a little bit of a halo appear here. Uh, so I'm really trying to be conscious of that. Um, now again, the color temperature, it's, it seems to be all right. We can warm it up a little bit, um, but I do want to keep sort of the blue sky and, and that sort of thing. But I'm going to show you a cool trick with that later. Um, again, 
I'm gonna say, unless you want a really highly detailed image, uh, the HDR detail, things like that, you don't really need to play around with. Um, this image is not too noisy, so you don't really need to um, play around with the denoise, but this is one of the cool features with uh, Aurora is that you get the denoise right inside the um, editing platform, so you can really sort of adjust your image. Um, now, other than that, uh, some of the cool features uh, in Aurora that you get sort of a radiance effect, which is okay. But a lot of these, and I'm going to give give you this piece of advice, you know, hopefully fairly clear, is use them with a light-handed approach. Image radiance is nice, but you don't want your building glowing. Okay. Um, one of the cool features is we do have this polarizing filter, which will hopefully bring back um, a little bit of the blue sky that I'm looking for. Okay. And uh, you can actually add in, um, you can sharpen it up a little bit. Um, but again, all of this is just taking a, a light handed approach. We don't need the glow. Now, if you're wanting a um, basically a, uh, a darker sky, so, so what I'm kind of shooting for here is we've got the sun uh, popping through the bottom of the tribal. And I want it to look like um, you know darkness is coming, so I can actually adjust the the top and the bottom of the image to sort of reflect that. So I can I can drop down the exposure on the top. Uh, I can cool it down to bring out that nice blue. And what I'm doing here is I'm I'm adding in sort of a a sort of not like a mental uh, separation, but I want to show like this is dark, this is light. So I can, you know, maybe even increase the exposure a little bit on the bottom to make the sun a little bit more radiant and I can, you know, warm it up a touch too. So we're now really pushing the separation here, okay? And again, this is an HDR shot, but again, what you see that I'm doing here is, is yeah, I'm editing the crap out of it, but I'm also doing it in a way that it doesn't assault your eyes as soon as you see it. Now, that's open for discussion. You may think, oh yeah, this image is crap, okay? Uh, but you may not. So other than that, um, we're pretty much good to go. Um, you can, and this is another feature that um, I kind of love about a Aurora HDR is maybe you can bump up the saturation for, um, you know, certain uh, colors if you really want to bring them out over the other ones. Uh, but for me, I think this image is pretty much done. Um, now, what we're going to do in the next part is just quickly clean it up in uh, Photoshop, but I'll, I'll um, spare you that and I'll show you the uh, final image right now. Okay, so this is the final image and all I've done is I've just jumped into Photoshop and I've just cleaned up the image a little bit using the uh, spot removal tool and some of the um, content aware features uh, just to remove uh, some of the, um, well for lack of a better term, to remove my laziness because I really need to clean my sensor. But all that was pretty much there were some dust spots and maybe I think there was a security camera there that was really drawing my eye away from the actual image. Um, but this is the final image. It looks relatively normal. It I hope it doesn't make your eyes bleed. But all of this was using uh, just a basic light-handed approach into uh, uh, with Aurora 2017 and that's pretty much it. Now, if you would like to learn more about uh, Aurora 2017, I will be uh, releasing a tutorial coming up soon on my tutorial site at learn.jasonteal.com. And if you enjoy these short little uh, videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, the link is down below. Thank you very much and have yourselves a great day.